So, it's 1971. It's a typical windy summer day in Belgium. The young and yeah, innovative artist Panamarenko tries to launch his airship and fly with it to Arnhem, the Netherlands. That day, the wind decides not to take the zeppelin into the air, but it ends up in a fence and gets stuck. Everybody goes home disappointed. Now, this might seem like a failure, but actually this action is the beginning of a very peculiar story in the history of art. Panamarenko intended to fly around the world with his Aero modeller and to impress and visit his idol Brigitte Bardot. But it never took off. And he ended up living for more than 30 years in the same old house in Antwerp with his mother. Now, to safeguard the future of his former house and working station, the airbase Bikorstraat, he donated it to the Museum of Contemporary Art in Antwerp. And from 2007 till 2009, they dismantled the place and found 100 original Panamarenkos. I'm yeah, telling you 100, but of course that depends on the definition you give to the word original. Many of the objects found in the house were not objects of art in the museological sense of the word. And that's what I want to talk about. When does something becomes a work of art? An example. This giant boot, uh, as big as this, uh, I think, was found in the cellar of his house. Before that, it was only a story. We know that the boot was used before the shoe shop of Panamarenko's mother. And probably it was used as an ashtray too. Um, but we can look at this object as a very early sculpture that reflects the later pop art-like sculpture of the artist Panamarenko. This self-made pinball machine was also found in the cellar. The artist designed it himself and assembled it together with his father. It was meant to be put into bars and to become a multi-millionaire with it. Uh, we think it never left the house. So these two objects are clearly functional objects. But something has happened. And I ask you, can something become an object of art? Can something be discovered as an art object? If I was talking to a room full of archaeologists, uh, they would certainly say yes. Yes, it can. Because I don't think anyone will deny that ancient Greek pottery are pieces of high art. But the question, of course, is when and how does an object become an art object? Well, the Enlightenment philosopher David Hume said something very interesting back in the 18th, 18th century. And he told, the combined taste of the art critics defines what is art. So, think about it. Um, I think he underestimates the creativity of artists, the process of making art, and he certainly overestimates the role of the art critic, the role of the art historian, and that includes myself. But what's interesting regarding to this object, this object has a title, Steel Plate Pierced by Bullet Holes. Uh, a title that totally explains the work. I uh, don't think there's any explanation needed. And one of these early works was 
put up for auction at Christie's. So is it really the art world that decides what is art? I don't think it's as simple as that. But this object gives another, yeah, rather interesting insight. Now, the object is clearly an echo of an action long ago. And that brings us to the postmodern philosopher Jean-Francois Lyotard, who sees art as a process, art as an action, not as a collection of objects. And that's far more interesting. Panamarenko drew a lot of sketches. They were found in his house. Some of them made it into the ar art world. Others remained IDs, remained floating around. And in that way, we can look at art objects not as a final destination, but as an intermediate state. The happening, the action, was far more important for Panamarenko. Panamarenko even never referred to himself as an artist. He looks at himself as an adventurer and as an inventor. Nowadays, inventors are looked as people who find solutions for practical problems and their inventions end up with a practical result. But if we go back to the middle of the 19th century, there was a much broader definition of the invention. An invention was linked to imagination, to experiment, to adventure. And I think that's a much more useful definition when we look at the work of Panamarenko or we look at the work of art, artworks by other artists. Now, one of the works of Panamarenko, when he describes his works as functional, he doesn't mean they really function. He rather means that they reflect on an action that could take place. And this is a beautiful example, his diving suit, um, designed in the begin of beginning of the 90s. And he actually used it, and I am going to prove it to you with this picture. Here you see the artist. Uh, at the bottom of the sea, reading a book. How beautiful is that? Now, if we take the happening, if we take the action as a starting point, we could wonder if the objects created by artists, the object created by Panamarenko, if they feel at home in a museum. In his former house, they clearly do. And if you're wondering or thinking maybe it's too far to go to Antwerp, you can land there with your personal helicopter right onto the roof. So don't let distance stop you and welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks.